Hello and welcome to my quick guide of the new farm scene 22 precision farming 3 DLC. Want to know which soil type is the best for maximizing yield or how to reach near 100% environmental score for better selling prices? I show you. Let's get started. First, soil types and soil sampling. You can find four types of soil around the maps. Loamy sand, sandy loam, loam and silty clay. You have two options to get soil data from your field. First, buy the new Isaria Scout soil sampling device and go out to the fields and collect soil samples. When you approach a field, after unfolding the device, the minimap zooms in and you can see the range of the device it can collect soil sample from. Get samples from a few spots to make sure that the whole field is covered. You can see the collection coverage on the map. It is possible to get samples from every type of field state even if it's ready for harvest. Although you cannot use device on fields that you do not own. If you collect samples near your neighboring field you can see their soil type too. After you are done collecting Press the appropriate button to send it to laboratory analysis. After a minute or so, you will see the results on your map. The second method for getting the soil data for the map is to buy them. You can buy the soil map for each buyable land, but you must own the land to purchase the soil map. Now let's see pH values. For better yield, the pH value should be in the optimal range. This range depends on the soil type pH value can be increased by liming the field and luckily the lime spreaders can automatically adjust the application rate to maintain the target level but you can adjust it manually too. When spreading lime the minimap zooms in so that you can see the value changes on the minimap. If you miss this step the harvest yield will decrease. Also after every harvest the pH value of the soil decreases a bit, so this means that every few harvests you will need to lime the fields. Let's see the pH map before and after the liming. Next you will see the nitrogen map. Similar to the pH values, nitrogen level should be in the optimal range as well. But in this case, the optimal level of nitrogen depends on the planted crop and not the soil type. The nitrogen level can be increased by applying any type of fertilizer. The optimal way to increase nitrogen value is the following. First, apply slurry or manure before sowing because they can only increase the nitrogen at a fixed level depending on the soil type. If you use slurry, you can install John Deere's manure sensing system to the slurry tankers which can control the spreading rate automatically based on the nitrogen level of the slurry. Let's check the map before and after spreading slurry. Second, um, what's this? <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure what's happening here. Let's try it again. Second, Apply solid or liquid fertilizer at the first growth stages after sowing the crop because the fertilizer spreaders and sprayers can automatically adjust the nitrogen level based on the crop type. Also, same as with the lime spreaders, this can be adjusted manually. To further help this process and apply the optimal fertilizer quantity, you can use the new crop sensors. These are very useful because nitrogen levels can change over time, so it is important to update the nitrogen map with the latest values. There are two types of new sensors available for purchase. One is the Isario Pro Active, which can be mounted on a front 3-point mount. This sensor can be used at night and can be bought with a weight added to it the second sensor is the Isaria Pro Compact, which is installed on a tractor's cab mirrors and can only be used in daylight. In addition to this, these sensors can only be used 
when the crop has enough green leaves, so basically the first few stages of growth is the ideal time to use the sensors along with the fertilizer. Let's check out the map before and after fertilizing. Depending on the soil type, some crops may need lower or higher seed rate applied when sowing. This will maintain the yield for the different soil types. The seeders can manually or automatically adjust the seed rate. From now on, with precision farming, weeds can appear in smaller or bigger patches on the fields. Thanks to the newly added John Deere Power Spray Sprayer, this will save us money on herbicide. This is the only sprayer that has a cool see and spray feature. The sprayer has cameras installed and with the AI and computer vision, they can see if the ground below has weeds. If it does, the sprayer activates over that spot and the herbicide is applied. As you can see, it only sprays the weeds and not the whole field. We also have two new buildings with this DLC, two types of RTK stations. The antennas on the buildings improves the GPS signal for the helpers. This means that they work up to 11% faster. I'm really not sure how they ended up with this 11%, why not 10%, but okay. Also, this makes me wonder, does this mean that they can drive vehicles faster than the attachment's limit? Hmm, interesting. One of the stations is just a building, which is a pretty small one, so it can fit everywhere. The other one is basically a shed for machinery, which has the RTK antenna on the roof. After harvesting, let's see the yield map. As you can see on the map, we can clearly see the best soil type for the yield. And the winner is... Loam. The complete order of soil type for best yield is the following. Loam, sandy loam, silty clay, loamy sand. One interesting thing is that it seems like crop destruction is not counted on the yield map, as you can see here. Now about the environmental score. How to reach almost 100%, which increases the sale prices by 15%. That's huge. As you can see, I got a 99% score. Let's see how can you reach it. For nitrogen, which only updates after the harvest, you get the maximum score of 30 points if you use both the manual sensor for organic fertilization and the crop sensor for the mineral fertilizer application. One thing to note here is that I think this is not true. On field 44, I did not use manure or slurry at all, yet I got the full points for the field as you can see. If you control the application rate manually, under and over fertilization will decrease the score. If you use automatic rate control, you should be fine. For pH value, if you keep the pH value in the optimal range, you will get the maximum score of 15 points. As same as for the nitrogen, if you use manual control for the application rate, too high or too low pH will decrease the score. If you use automatic rate control, you should be fine. For weed control, you can only reach full score of 30 if you use the new spot spray technology. This basically limits the max score to the new John Deere sprayer with the CN spray installed. If you use mechanical weeders, the maximum score you can get is 20 because of soil degradation and higher fuel usage. If you spray the whole field with herbicide, the max score is 15. If you don't care about weeds, you still get 10 points. If you turn off weeds in the game menu, you get the default 15 points and can reach a maximum of 85 environmental score, which leads to 10% increase in the cell prices. For soil sampling, the maximum score is 15. You will get this if you sample your fields or buy the soil map. Without this, the other ones are useless anyway, so this is a must have. For tillage, the maximum score is 10, which you can get if you use direct drill seeders and planters. Shallow tillage, which is probably the usage of cultivators or shallow cultivators, will get you 5 points. 
If you plow your fields, that will get you zero points for using excessive amount of fuel and leads to soil erosion. I guess it is time to turn off the periodic plowing requirement in the game menu. One thing to mention is that I used the default settings for new farmer mode. Since I had the precision farming DLC enabled, there is no option to disable the periodic climbing requirement. Now let's see the economic analysis. After harvesting, you will be able to see the full report of economic analysis. You can reset it anytime, like for example after every harvest, so the improvements can be seen. For each field plot, you can check the breakdown of money spent for each field work phase. It seems like this harvest season we managed to spare 24% on liming, 38% on liquid fertilizer, 3% on seeds and an excessive amount of 92% on herbicide. See, the new herbicide sprayer really worth the money on the long run. Since you cannot buy manure or slurry in the shop, it cannot tell how much money was spared on those. But since they are practically free, if you have cows or pigs, it's not a problem. If you want me to do more deep dive into numbers, spreadsheets and testing precision farming, how each field work phase affects the yield and your ability to spare money, let me know in the comments section below. If you like this tutorial, please leave a like, and if you want to see more farm sim content from me, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.